How should you react in the event of a deadly shooting spree? First, remain calm. If everyone is armed, the situation will be much safer, particularly if everyone happens to be wearing full body armor, just like the bad guy. Second, continue pushing gun-friendly legislation. If six-year-olds were allowed to carry concealed weapons, clearly lives would have been saved. Be sure to arm yourself with election year Fear of God rounds, which help replace actual gun safety laws with wonderful, wonderful words that make us feel warm, somber, and patriotic all at the same time. Keep your gaze steady and remain focused on why, not how. It's the why that keeps them guessing for longer. Remember, dead children and moviegoers are a price we have to pay, lest we slip back into the dark days of tyranny, when we couldn't buy assault rifles and hundred round magazines. See, guns don't kill people. People with guns that shoot 70 people in under two minutes kill people. This is one of those days where you just sort of smile when you're going to work because what? It's American gun nuts. Exactly, you know, especially in light of the past two weeks, we've had three mass shootings. I know. And you know what? It, you really start, you got to start taking a lighthearted look at some serious solutions and make sure that you put them into action. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. We're going to take an ironic look at the news in the gun industry down in the military industrial complex called the United States of America while we continue broadcasting video radio across the globe, much to the chagrin of the NSA. Now, what would you think about a visually impaired person having a gun? Oh, do tell. Well, you know, there is legislation to protect that right. Americans love their guns. I love my gun. Love my gun. And in Iowa, even people who can't see can have guns. Seriously. While legally blind citizens are not allowed driver's licenses in Iowa, there's nothing on the permit application that says you have to see it well enough to fill it in. And permits have been granted. Supporters say that blocking blind people from having guns would violate the Americans with Disabilities Act. And some gun owners believe they don't need to be able to see to shoot. We're not so sure. And neither is Stevie Wonder who said, Imagine me with a gun. It's just crazy. Because... We're on the internet, and we've got the information. That we do. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, come on, seriously. Somebody didn't stand back and say, wow. Wow, yeah, I know. But okay. get, uh, crazy people can get guns, too. Okay. Yeah, when you think about that, when they're arming Syrian rebels, are they making them do, like, a psychological psychological test? I don't think so. Ah, you know, a oh, little few holes in the story here. Yeah. But it's always interesting when you have people and guns and kids and guns and crazy people and guns. <laughs> uh, so, in order to endeavor to bring you the whole story, Robert has brought us this phenomenal... <laughs> this one will make you shake your head, folks. Okay, prepare to shake your head. Remember, join us. You are the solution. We're here to back you up. Check this out. Loaded weapon fires at a reading event in Lodi. Tonight we're learning the loaded gun didn't have a safety and a small child was actually the one who pulled the trigger. Andrew Minetti is getting answers about how something like this could have happened. A Glock 35 with a flashlight. That's the type of handgun a Lodi SWAT officer had in his thigh holster when a little boy somehow managed to pull the trigger and shoot the police officer. It doesn't have an external safety or anything like that. However, the gun functioned you know, as it was supposed to. When the trigger was pulled, the gun went off. The officer was showing off the department's SWAT truck, vests, and other gear at a children's event called Reading Roundup on August 24th. A small child, uh, witnesses told us he's about six to eight years old, was able to uh, walk up to the officer and was able to pull the trigger. The bullet hit the officer's leg. He was taken to the hospital for a minor injury and released. The department is investigating the shooting to see if protocols or procedures need to be changed to prevent the same thing from happening again. Officers want to find the child and his parents to piece together what went wrong. Hopefully speaking to the child and uh, the child's parents just to kind of find out you know, how they were able to, uh, to get access to the officer's gun 
what the child's intent may have been. You know, we don't know if it was accidental or intentional. Police say because the gun was in a holster to accommodate the attached flashlight, the trigger was more accessible. The officer has been on the SWAT team for about five years, and he is back on duty following the incident. Certainly want to find out more about this investigation. Okay, Andrea, thank you. So never mind asking the cop, okay? How it happened, yeah. What I want to know is why was a SWAT team at a children's event? A reading event, no less. Just more indoctrination for the militarized, the militarized state? Yeah, you know, when you start looking at that. But then again... They actively have cops come and uh, they have a... Yeah, he's sitting there pointing at the next one. They actually have cops come and arrest kids. Hi, you know, grade school kids. Yeah, you know, in the farmer's markets, they can sell real guns, but toy guns are illegal. Okay, Not collective just, yeah. thumping of head. Okay, yeah. face pump. Okay, now. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> in order to make sure that once again you get the full story about what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes? I got nothing to say to preface this one. Okay. If there's one thing I know about Terry J. J Dunlap Sr., it's that he is a gun safety advocate and specialist. He's a certified firearms instructor. And, um, well, recently what he was doing was... Uh, doing a little training and teaching people how to uh, carry a concealed firearm and as he was doing that and showing them how to safely carry it etc uh, he shot someone oops <laughs> now here is my one of my favorite quotes of all time this is the guy he shot uh, his name is Piemont and uh, he seems like a good guy he says quote up until he shot me accidentally it was very informative very well laid out until I got shot, I was learning a lot. But then when I got shot, it wasn't as much fun anymore. He continues to say, I learned a lot. Then again, I was accidentally shot. <laughs> okay, now you ready for the fun part? Turns out this is not the first time the Dunlap Senior has shot someone while using a firearm. No, not in the course of duty. Apparently, many years ago, when he was trying to scare his young daughter at a haunted ride, he shot the gun. Yeah, that would scare her. And just like it happened this time, the bullet ricocheted. Because that's what happens sometimes when you shoot a bullet. In this recent example, it ricocheted off a desk. Another one, it ricocheted off a ceiling. It hit a 14-year-old girl. Her name is Kathy Schmelzer now. She's now 50. And when she found out about it, she said, oh no, he's done it again. Or in the immortal words of Ted Stevens. Oh no, not again. Hey, jackass, stop firing your gun. The bullets actually bounce off of things and hit people. But don't worry. He's a good guy with a gun. So obviously, the bullets can never do harm, except for the two people he shot. That's terrible. Yeah, good guy with a gun. I mean, this guy, I'm telling you, how on earth. Uh, the other one, you know, uh, I forgot about that. There are holsters that protect the trigger on your gun well yeah okay but that was from the one before so in order to make sure that you get the entire story <laughs> well you know there is a concern with surveillance in the states <laughs> yes. one states come up with a solution yes yes tell me more this is philip Steele. he's the founder of professional drone hunters incorporated and also the author of an ordinance that requires people to buy a license before firing their arms at uavs and he's already gotten a lot of interest he sold more than 60 of these licenses online for about 25 bucks a pop but if you do purchase one of those papers it does not mean that you can just go off willy-nilly firing your gun at anything and everything overhead there are rules, of course. In order to get the license, you must be able to read and understand English. The drone itself must be flying less than 1,000 feet in the air, so good luck on measuring that. It must be flying over private property, and you can only shoot at a drone during the daytime. Now, if you're thinking that selling these licenses is a bit premature, you'd be correct. The town board is split on uh, how to issue these and whether they should even issue them. And the residents won't vote on the ordinance until early October. But Mr. Steele already has one major supporter aiming to get the ordinance passed. 
This is a picture of Deer Trail Mayor Frank Fields showing off proper drone hunting techniques. Now, for the record, Philip Steele says that he has never seen a drone flying on his property and that the move is mostly symbolic. The FAA is not laughing, though. It warned that shooting a UAV could result in a criminal and civil action actually being taken against that gunslinger. And by the way, I went ahead and printed out my own drone hunting license. This one didn't cost me $25. This one only cost me about 10 cents. Hang on a second. Let me get my printer going. <laughs> okay, because i got to print one yeah, of those ones yeah. off. The NSA is coming under a lot of fire lately. Yes. And you know, people don't like surveillance and being spied on. No. And apparently the NSA has got a systems upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Run the clip. Check it out. According to a new article in Foreign Policy magazine, this man, current NSA chief General Keith Alexander, once spent American tax dollars on a bizarre and futuristic control room for the Army's Intelligence and Security Command's creepily named Information Dominance Center. Unsatisfied with his war room, the general brought in a Hollywood set designer to work on a shiny Star Trek style makeover. Complete with chrome paneling and doors that go whoosh. Why the bean counters signed off on this egomaniac's weird sci-fi fantasy is unclear. The general used the 22-foot main screen to show off his spying tools and had political and military bigwigs sit in the centerpiece captain's chair. His surveillance motto, collect it all, could also apply to his childish fascination with such toys. These are the actual photographs of the room. Do you think this was a grotesque use of public money by the government or a reasonable tool for the nation's defense? I'm still grinning. I'm still laughing. Oh, yeah. Well, General Keith Alexander, a true nerd. Yes, I mean, go for it, man. You got billions of dollars. Make it look like it's shiny. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. It's our pleasure to bring you the alternative side of the news today. Make sure you join us on our Facebook group and YouTube. Spread us around, like, and share. And that's enough self-promotion for one day. Make sure you get out to join us on the uh, March Against Monsanto yes. on October 11th. Yes, and make sure you get out November the 5th worldwide. We're bringing it the Million Mask March, November 5th at the sales here in Kelowna, but at City Halls around the world. It's going to be huge. And remember, we've got some documentaries coming up right here. The Warriors and Thieves. Yes. And, and Freeloaders. That's all coming up. Stay tuned. And make sure you get out there. Be the change you want to see in the world, because we're there to back you up. A Bank of America intern has died after reportedly working three days straight at the company's London office. 21-year-old Moritz Erhardt, an exchange student from Germany studying at the University of Michigan, was found dead in his shower after working 72 hours at Bank of America London. Earhart had reportedly put in several long hour days while working with the company. Interns at the bank make an estimated 2,700 pounds a month, equal to more than 4,000 US dollars. Representatives from Bank of America London confirmed the death and police aren't treating it as suspicious, though they still aren't completely sure how Earhart died. Long strenuous hours are not uncommon in the banking industry. One former banker told The Independent interns can regularly clock up to 100 or even 110 hours a week, but people are fully aware that banking is hard work and the company constantly reminds you to manage upwards in order to not overheat. The Evening Standard quotes another intern in the banking industry. Every intern's worst nightmare is what's called the magic roundabout, which is when you get a taxi to drive you home at 7 a.m. and then it waits for you while you shower and change and then takes you back to the office. Earhart's online work profile stated he'd also previously worked at KPMG Consulting, Morgan Stanley, and Deutsche Bank. He graduated as valedictorian of his high school class. For Newsy, I'm Matt Moreno. Daiichi no course,